The first thing that I want to do is to show you folks a strategy of um, kind of, of of getting yourself to 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 think really ecologically. And what it is is you're going to make a cross section across the landscape. So just imagine that this was a map and you drew a line on the map from point A to point B and you just dropped a vertical, you took your journal and you stuck it down right in the middle of that landscape and it captured everything that was along the side of that. That's, that's a cross section. And when you do this, right, we'll just start with, like let's say here is what the ground is doing, right? It's just, it's just a, it's, you're on a flat place. All right, let's say you're in the middle of, of a deep forest and you want to um, do a, a cross section there, what I would suggest you do is sort of figure out kind of for my drawing, decide right that the height of the tallest tree is gonna be about here. If I make it too high, I have to draw a lot of trees. So don't make these, these too high, but let's say this is the height of the tallest trees and they are, All right, you have these big trees, and there's my canopy. One, two, jump the pencils. Um, I am going to, on my recording here, see if I can pin, I don't know how to pin my video. Anyway, um, so here are just a couple of thumbnail, my tallest trees. I'm going to put in one more over here. And for the masses of leaves, I'm just putting in some horizontal squiggles and kind of drawing lines down from those. There is my, my tree. Now I would get myself to look at where, what is, what is, this is, this is the canopy layer. And sort of figure out what is, what is the top layer of the, the, the forest that I'm in? What's, what's going on up there? And then you'll often find that, that plants are taking up all sorts of different roles. Like there may be a high zone, that's your canopy. Um, then there'll be a zone of mid-level plants. And for, for these ones, I'm gonna drop in these little guys. And what you're going to get is a sense of the density of the forest. And as I do this, say there's one type of plant, I can start to make a little key for myself. So I'm in a habitat where I don't know it very well. I can call these um, the light greens. All right, um, because they have light green leaves. And then there is another type of tree down here in the mid zone. And I'm gonna put in more, just a different shape. So this kind of more vertical angular thing, these are going to be, uh, these ones had uh, banana shaped leaves.
So I've just given myself a little clue here to help me remember what, uh, you know, to tell these apart. So I don't have to be an expert in plant identification. And I can get that. Now, then there's a understory down here. And if you have some colored pencils with you and you switch your pencils as you're doing this, it just is another way of reinforcing to yourself that um, there are these different levels in the forest and you're ascribing these trees to it. So I'm going to, in my key, I'm going to label this very common shrub. And um, what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm going to, they have these leaves that are like this. It's kind of reverse little heart shaped leaves. So I'm just gonna draw that leaf next to that little symbol. And I now, as I'm walking around in this ecosystem that I don't know, I've got this one identified for myself. And sometime later, I may sit down with a botanist and say, what are all those things with the heart leaves? And they say, oh, that's a this, that, or the other thing. I'm gonna write in here, this, that, or the other thing, right? So the, uh, this is a great way. Um, then I'm gonna have another kind of understory shrub in here. And I'm going to color those ones in to make my marks a little bit more distinctive. And I'll show that those ones have little leaves like that. So you see, without getting What? So. Jack, can you unmute? I've uh, accidentally muted you. Someone else was playing music. All right. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you, we lost about two, three minutes of you. Oh, oh please. okay. Um, well, don't worry. There wasn't anything critical that I said. Um, but what, 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 I'm, um, what I'm doing here is I have just created a canopy, a mid-story, and an understory for my, um, for this little environment where I'm, I'm exploring. And I haven't had to make any real fancy drawings. And I'm pretending that in this habitat, I'm new to it, I don't know how to, um, these are the big three. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm making up a little key that is going to allow me to differentiate the different species that I have. And it doesn't have to be a pretty picture. As a matter of fact, um, a pretty picture often gets, is more visually confusing than something that is um, a little bit more diagrammatic. So I'm making a little diagram here to get myself to, to record, you know, what are my plants? Then I can come along and in the, underneath the ground here, and I'm going to write a few notes. Um, it is a black, moist soil. Right. So I'm getting what's in there. Um, I'm gonna make a note um, overcast, it's humid, very 
humid. Right? Um, and maybe I'll even put that in a cloud. So you see how I'm getting all this, this data and making a little chart like that really gets me running around in the forest and looking at things in a very different way than if I were, say, doing a, a portrait of what this part of the forest should look like. Right? So now I'm going to add a few other really fun things into it. I'm going to add a few more organisms. First, I'm going to draw me. This is me for scale. All right? So just by you put in this little character, and all of a sudden, you understand the scale of these trees. If I had put in a character like this, me. Then it says a really different thing about the nature of this forest. So just by putting in that little, that little, that little character there, you get a ton of information that was um, sort of docu documented in your, your thing. Now, let's say you are a birder. And you uh, you know some some birds. You hear the sound of um, a, a lolly lolly bird up here. I'm going to write lolly lolly. All right, and there is no bird called a lolly lolly bird, but I just made that up. All right, so you hear one singing. Heard only, right? And then you see down here under the 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 in the brush. Oh, up here you might even write in we could you know uh, sort of a description of the sound that you hear in the lolly lolly bird. But down here in the the bushes, you're walk, walking around here with your binoculars, and you see this really cool long beak, skulking bird. And you don't know what it is. I'm going to draw a line to it, and I'm going to call it Longbeak. And then down over here, I would just start drawing a little sketch of what, what Longbeak looks like. Oh no, long beak just flew away, but that's okay. I'll return to the sketch the next time that bird shows up. I'm gonna write long beak. So you're in, a, imagine you're, you're in an environment, you don't know any of the plants. You, you, so it's not, you're not playing the name game with everything, but you're just trying to kind of get yourself to, you know, figure out who's where, what's, what's happening in these different places. All right, this is a great way to go about it. And it doesn't require any pre-existing information. You can just jump right in and, and, and create a sketch like this. Now, it gets even more interesting if you, hold on, I'm gonna just change views here. So it gets even more interesting. This, this, this 
sort of side view of the, just sort of a slice of the forest that you're in with a little U standing in it. You're gonna be getting the structure of the forest. Doing that project is gonna make you think in a really different way about the place that you're in. You're gonna find yourself asking really different questions because you're in this place making a little diagram like this. It's a, it's a really interesting, valuable exercise. And again, you don't have any pressure to make it into a pretty picture. And the minute you start kind of getting in there and trying to draw leaves on, on, on one of these plants, it loses a lot of its value as a, as a quick diagram. And it gets so cluttered that it's actually less useful to you as a thinking tool for exploring the habitat. So this is one of these places where a diagram is this awesome tool for getting you to think. But now let's, let's go, instead of flat like this, it becomes really fun if there is some changes in the relief and topography around where you are standing. So if you are in a canyon or you're going over a hill, um, this is a really fun thing to do. I used to um, work at a, a science school in Grand Teton National Park. And there's a hill right out behind the school. And I would take a group of students up the hill. We would all have journals. And as we we're going up the hill, we'd be making a little diagram of you know, the, the sorts of trees we were seeing changing as we went up and over this hill. And then all sorts of interesting questions would flow out of that. Let me just do a little diagram for you now about what that can look like. Right. So let's say instead of flat, you are in a place where say that is the the, the shape of the topography where you are. And down here, right there is the creek. If you do a cross section across a place where there is a change in the, 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 the elevation, these little side view drawings get really interesting really fast. Um, so over here, next to the creek, this has some willows growing. And I'm going to make a little key here. And you can also use color on these, by the way. It's, it's really fun to drop color into these. You can absolutely do that. So there's, there's, there's willows on either side of this creek. But as I walk up this direction, I am getting, um, I'm getting into a few little coniferous trees. And so I'm gonna have a new icon here for, those, and let's say those are this is a Douglas fir. And then that gives way to a little bit of manzanita scrub. But on the other side, I've got some Douglas firs. And it is Douglas firs all the way up. So very quickly, I can get 
a lot of really cool information. All right. Once I make this, put myself in the picture, and I can start looking for all sorts of other things. This is where the yellow warbler is. All right. This is where the olive-sided flycatcher is. And up in here, I can hear the green-tailed toey. And the yellow warbler was really cooperative. Um, so you know anybody who's cooperative, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna sketch them. And so I just start to to draw on my yellow warbler there. And let's say I don't really know what type of willow this is, so I'm going to also kind of draw carefully, kind of diagram in. You know, a few of the organisms that are kind of key here, and I'm going to draw this little yellow warbler among the willows and kind of have a, a, a zoom in on one of those branches. But these willows have a lot of bites out of them. So now as an ecologist, I'm thinking who is, who's eating these? They've also got some cool galls on them. Have you ever seen those, and if you ever find galls on a, on a willow leaf? Gonna, they're so neat that you decide that, I think I'm gonna draw this leaf also in cross section to show that these galls um, are on both sides of the leaf. So, What you get is a already you can see that you you have you've got a, a thinking like this is really different than if you are um, kind of walking around looking for a bird to create a, 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 a portrait of. And again, there's, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, I'm going to put this color green in all these willows. And I'm going to put this color green in my Doug Furs. And on my Doug Furs, I'm going to make my brush strokes a little bit more horizontal just to have another kind of visual difference between This is a terrific way just to, to force your brain to, to play as an ecologist. Oh, those galls need a little bit of color, don't they? There's some insects that uh, lay their eggs in the leaf. 
and uh, the plant grows these cool structures in and around them. And there you are, you're, you're, you're playing this, this kind of thinking is really rewarding in the field. When you start playing in any system like this, you're gonna notice things that you otherwise would not have seen. And you can even turn these into kind of little storybooks too, this olive-sided flycatcher. It's actually, uh, it's actually, You can write notes about how it's catching bugs out of the air. Right. Um, this one, this yellow warbler is, is singing. So I'm gonna have a little voice box coming up here. And in this, I would write a description of that song and maybe even draw a little picture of what that sounds like. This sort of a diagrammatic approach to a place also syncs really well with a landscapito. <clears throat> now, if you're not familiar with the landscapito concept, we got to talk. Um, landscapitos are the the are an absolute gift for the the nature sketcher out there. If you are, you ever had the experience of settling down to do a landscape drawing, and you started over here on this side of your paper, and you work your way across to there, and part way through your drawing, you got really sick of drawing trees. It took forever. The people you were hiking with got sick of waiting and they went on ahead or made grumbly noises. Um, you know, it's a big landscape drawing can take a lot of time, but a landscape drawing can be really valuable to help you later on recollect a place. So that's where the landscapito comes in. A landscapito is a small landscape drawing. You know, as, let's say, you're just this big. You, know, you double its size. If you make, if you have, imagine a drawing one inch by one inch. If you double its size, you've actually quadrupled your work because it's the size of that area has increased by the square. So if it's now instead of a one inch side, it's a two inch side, you've got four times as much space to cover. So the amount of work you have to do goes up really fast when you increase the size of a landscape drawing. And there's nothing wrong with doing a landscape drawing when you, that's big when you want to, when you've got a lot of time, nobody's breathing down your neck, and that's what you decide you really want to, to drop a lot of time and attention into. It's, it's great to do, but the landscapito is really, really fun because you get a lot of the same pizzah for it, um, for this just a tiny little amount of area. So um, what I want to do is just demonstrate a few little kind of landscapitos, and you'll see how they can, um, they can fit into this sort of ecological view. Another thing that's great about the landscapito is that when you, um, when you do them, they take so little time that you can focus on that little area over there, collect the information that you want to show, and what do you know? You have time now to eat your lunch and draw another little one over there and another one over there. They don't take very much time at all, right? They're small, take two, right? Um, and, and so you can pick out the elements in a place that you really, really want to show. And also the parts of a drawing that you don't want to do, you don't have to. So let's check out the Landscapito because it's also a very useful tool in the toolkit of the ecological sketcher. 
I'm going to just do one down here. Um, so if I am uh, if I'm looking out at, at a landscape, what I will often do is I will make, and I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so that you can see, but just sort of bear in mind the scale. I'm going to be working in an area about this big, right? But it's going to be enlarged on your screen. Go. Be close. There we go. All right. So what I'll do is I will often just lightly put in. Uh, I've got one big mouth. I'm kind of in this valley. I look down, and I see um, there is a, there's a distant range back there, um, and I have I'm I'm in this valley where my my little creek comes down. So I'm going to make my landscape drawing just that big. What I often do is I put in some of my, my major elements and then I decide to put in my frame. So this one is going to have, there's a hillside that is in front of me and it's covered with uh, coniferous trees. On the other side here, I've got sort of a zone kind of coming down here where the trees come up on the hill and then uh, it turns to man's needed. Distant hills back here. Um, so that, that did not take very much time at all. And it will take um, also just a, a mere moment to get that to be a color picture. We'll let that dry while I work on this stuff in the background. We have another hill that is coming down here and test my color. Oh, I'm glad I did. I didn't want that. That's my color. Zoom back. So very often, just a little study like this, you'll look at that and you'll just, you'll, oh yeah, I remember being in this place. That is, that's all you need to, um, to get yourself, I want to see if I can get this to focus a little bit better. I think that's just what we'll have to, to deal with here. Um, so that's, that's a very, very powerful um, way of collecting information. These little drawings, you can just stick them in all over your page and you're getting a little spot from here, a little spot from there. I'll show you kind of a couple of fun things you can do with Landscapitos. You can also play with this format. I know I'm saying draw small things, but this time I'm going to draw just down here this much round. Something like this. 
you can make your sky as big as you want. And you're not going to, uh, it's really not going to take up very much more of your time. Um, so in this, here I go, coming down here, a little bit of a graded wash, getting paler towards the horizon there. I want that sky to be a more intense bright blue. And then here is Just make sure that your mountains at the bottom are a darker value than the darkest value that's up there in your sky. You don't want your sky to be um, darker than than what's on the what's on the ground there. When you have little landscape studies like this, just sort of going back to thinking like an ecologist, a really fun thing that you can do is um, annotate the landscape drawing. So this sounds can sound a little you know sacrilegious to you know start to draw all over your landscape drawings because sometimes people kind of we let our landscape drawings start to feel a bit sometimes kind of precious. Um, but it is really fun to put a few dots in the sky and draw a little line pointing to them. And these are white-throated swifts. Um, and this down here is fir and hemlock. So having words incorporated into your, um, the little landscape studies is, is really, really useful. So that's, that's, that is a, a great way of kind of just expanding your um, your uh, why, why am I at a loss for words? Um, expanding the amount of data of data that you have recorded on your journal page. Now, a couple other things that I can do here that are sort of fun. I'm just going to jump back to this. I meant to do this earlier, but I forgot. As ecologists, another thing we're thinking about is what directions are things facing? So in this drawing here, um, this direction here is north. So this is a north, um, so this slope faces the south. So this is south. This slope here faces the north. Something that ecologists think about a lot is which, um, which direction does that slope generally face? If you're in the northern hemisphere, the sun tends to be more in the southern part of the sky, so these south-facing slopes get a lot more heat and north facing slopes are more in shadow. It's the reverse of that in the southern hemisphere. So having some directions um, on your page are, are, are really useful. So this is, this is going to be 
Um, looking, let's see, this, this slope here is south facing, north facing. Am I looking east or west? Um, holding my hands up. Well, anyway, writing in the direction that you are looking here, right? So this was, let's say this was um, looking southwest. Um, writing that in on your, your journal page, if you have, uh, can get any sense of the, the, the kind of cardinal directions. And for folks who are carrying a phone, um, that's, it's an easy solution. There are these very, very easy to use um, apps that allow us to get uh, a compass embedded in your telephone. And if you're gonna be having that thing along in your pocket anyway, you might as well also have a compass there so you can start to record some of those sorts of measurements. All right, we've got we've we've got one other really actually we have a lot of other things but but there there's there's a, a particularly interesting way of collecting data that I wanted to show you and what it does is it combines the idea of a map and one of these cross sections and. There's a few strategies that will help you do this, so don't panic. What we're about to do is we're all going to make a block diagram of a chunk of terrain. And when you do this out in the field, what you want to do is to keep your mind and your attitude really playful with it. If you get really kind of bunched up, and, and, and anxious about making it exact, um, it's not gonna be fun. What you're gonna be doing is a weird thing. You're trying to make like a three-dimensional view of a chunk of a mountain. And that's a pretty crazy thing. So give yourself license to kind of handle it loosely and, and, and be playful with it. And I think you're gonna find that you have a lot more fun with it. And what's gonna happen then is you're gonna do a few of them. And after you do a few of these, you'll realize that this is a, this is a way of mapping a place that, that you, can, you can use all, all over the, 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 the place. It, it becomes a lot of fun. A map is a really useful way of describing spatial information. And then when you turn it into this three-dimensional diagram, people look at that like, how on earth did you do that? Right? But um, we're going to walk through it together. And I think you're going to see that it's not so scary. Right? We're going to start by making kind of a, a box frame. And uh, my, my two daughters are in elementary school and my oldest, you know, they're sort of at a stage right now where like drawing geometric shapes is, is really fun. Drawing, drawing cubes and things. Once you kind of learn that trick to draw the cube, she draws a lot of cubes. So we're going to start off with sort of the cubic form and we're going to turn that into a landscape. Bear with me. It's going to be cool. All right. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be making a large box. I'm going to just sort of draw a small one off in the corner here. Um, what the general shape will be is this. And um, a couple ways of, of, of drawing this and thinking about this. One is if you start with a set of parallel lines here and a set of parallel lines here, I make a diamond. 
And then I'm going to come down some known distance, some distance here. I then come down that same distance on all the corners, like that. And that gives me this bottom edge. Also, interestingly, if I come down that same distance in the back, that gives me this back edge. Emphasize this corner a little bit more. And you get that, that, that cute form. These are, these are fun to draw. Um, you can, if you want to, um, you know, change the angles on these. And you can make this long in this direction and shorter over here. This can be at any angle you want. Now, I'm going to draw a line. If I had a line here, I'm going to draw a line parallel with that, going up in this direction, and a line parallel with this one, somewhere off in here. That gives me that corner. And then here's the drop down distance. There's the drop down distance. There's the back wall. Um, sometimes when I do these, I want to get the sense that this thing, like if I'm drawing, there'll be a slope, a mountain or something. So often these are kind of tall boxes that I'm going to be doing this. What I'll sometimes do is kind of force this perspective here where instead of making these ones vertical, parallel with each other, I'll kind of have those slant in a little bit. And you get the sense that here is, whoops. This is gonna feel more kind of popping up. And it's okay to do that with your as well. So I'm going to have a landscape drawing drawn inside of this. So let me just sort of construct down here on my page. I'm going to draw this sort of fairly large. I'm going to slope this one in just to be kind of playful. Slope it in a little bit. And these are all going to kind of have about the same length down. I'm drawing this fairly lightly. These lines will still be able to see them in the finished thing, but okay, this line here is at this angle. So that means this line over here, I'm gonna make it at the same angle. All right. Now, I'm about to put terrain and stuff in here. And uh, so th what this is going to be is I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna start here at this corner. I can start at a corner or I can start down from it. 
I can start my ground level at sort of any point. Maybe I'll start right here. And what I'm going to do, remember back here when we were just drawing the cross section of a place? That's, that's what I'm going to be doing here. And imagine that you, let's just kind of, you know, go back here. This, this was, we could easily sort of think about this, like drawing this line wasn't scary. This line that I'm going to do on the side of this thing is just going to be the same as this. It's just a line that is going to be coming down. Imagine if you're taking a walk down the hill, there would be a steeper place, a flatter place, a steeper place. That's what I'm doing on the side of this. So I'm going to be walking down this hill. And then it gets steeper. And then it flattens out. All right. So what this is, is just in whatever landscape you're in, the profile that is there. This just as well could have been Um, you know, coming in here, out, and then coming down really steeply, right? So this, what, what, the, what the, the, the profile of the hill is doing in here is just going to depend on whatever landscape that you have. Right? Can you move your page up a little bit? Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I just get down and looking at my paper here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there we go. So this whatever the profile is in any of these places. Um, let me uh, just sort of put another in here um, so you can sort of see what we'll be doing. This one, uh, we're going to start, I'm going to maybe start this up here. I'm going to come down and then it goes up in a little valley and over here and down here and to another valley, All right? So there's, there's two valleys, All right? And here, I am going to go up and I'm gonna go over to there, All right? I want this line, All right, so this is, Again, if I just walked across the landscape and it was down to a little valley, little flat top hill, then down really steep and up on the other side. Then I turned to right angles and kind of walked further up the hill. Now, that means that this is the top of a ridge. And the top of that ridge is going to kind of go in this way somewhere. Keeping track of the tops of ridges and the bottoms of valleys is gonna be really helpful here. Um, on this edge, um, I'm gonna have, actually, yeah, let's just, I'm gonna work with this. All right, so now this valley has a creek in it. And that creek is gonna come up this way. And then it, there's a fork in it and one goes off towards the hill we're on here. The other goes in this direction here. So that is, that's what a creek is going to do. And by the way, what I do when I kind of make these sorts of maps is I will often walk out onto a little ridge somewhere and I'll kind of plot myself in the middle of a landscape. And so I kind of can look down on one side, look down on the other, and I'm sort of drawing the landscape as I see it around me. All right? Now, over here, this creek comes up and it has a fork and 
and they come up this way. All right, so that's this is what one creek is going to do. This is what the other creek is going to do. Now, here is um, here is what I'm going to. So there's going to be kind of a bowl in here with all of these things flowing into this this valley here. There's going to be a bowl over here with all this this hill kind of flowing in here. So the middle of this hill is going to be somewhere up here. So if I had a trail up this ridge, the trail would kind of go along here and then up into there. So that is sort of, that is that ridge line there. And now I'm going to sort of suggest that at the edge of this, this, this ridge top here. And I like to kind of wrap my pencil lines around it. Sort of imagine that I'm, I'm kind of rubbing over the top of a ridge here. And in here, it's easy to see how that kind of comes over. I've got the edge of my ridge and, and drops down, right? So I'm just giving myself a few little contour lines here. Um, over in here, if I were a raindrop and I were up here, I'd be kind of coming down this way towards the creek. So this slope is going to be coming like this. I'll put some just very light kind of lines showing what, what water would do if it were draining down. in this place. So you think of yourself sort of carving what would what would water do in this place. Is my screen very out of focus? Yeah, it's hard it's yes. hard to see, Jack. It's hard to see. Uh, let me, I'm going to just uh, pause for a minute and see if I can manually focus this thing. Um, uh, not sure it's out of focus or just the lines are not dark enough for us to see. Okay. Um, I, I will, let me, let me try to punch. If, if the lines are darker like that, is it going to work? Yes, that works better. Yes, much better. Okay. All right. So a lot of these lines, I'm intentionally putting them in lightly. Um, but I guess that's too light for our, our, our visualization here. So if I have a creek and it's coming like this, what I'm doing is I'm visualizing that if I were a water drop here, I would be coming down to the, the creek following these sorts of angles. And We can't see those you, you lines. Can't see, you still can't see those? Ah. Um, let's draw with pen. All right. <clears throat> um, actually, first, I'll just sort of re reinforce this, that I've got a creek coming here, a creek here. I have another creek that is coming up here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, around these, this creek here, there is kind of a willow thicket. And 
up in here, let's say I've got a bunch of What I do is I draw sort of like these little kind of lumpy, curvy shapes. And I'll put another little lumpy, curvy shape out here. And if you put a little tiny trunk down on the bottom of those, then they start to feel like a little, tree shape. Um, or let's say those are little kind of clumps of, of oak trees. Got another kind of oak tree zone that is going to come up in here over where these water courses are. Draw some trunks on the bottoms of those and they Um, they start to feel more tree-like. Um, I'm going to use a similar symbol initially for these little kind of willow groves, but I'm, when I put color on them, those will stand out more. If I can see water courses, I can put those in. Um, here is the edge of the mountain. And I can see where it kind of comes out of my box here. And a few little lines that just sort of show the direction of the slope like this. They kind of help carve this landscape. Um, and then down here, I'm going to put in some taller coniferous trees in the bottom by the creek. I'm going to trim off, oops, trim off a little bit of my box. And then I'm going to draw the side of the box. I actually kind of like to, to part of being playful with it is I will sometimes imagine that parts of the box have, you know, come down and chunks of it have fallen off. And then you can draw those chunks on the ground over here. This, if I sliced this landscape away, this is now a waterfall. 
and it's going to pool out down here. This one is going to come down like that. And I'm going to make a little key over on the side. I'm going to have willows, oaks, and pines. Um, there are some willows down here. A few willows in here. That's where I have my oak trees. So having a different color in for the key. Can be helpful. Uh, if I kind of fray the tip of a brush and I kind of, I, I can now kind of just make marks down like this, and they really do a lot to help sort of carve the valleys and carve the. The, the, the structures, I, you kind of get these scratches that go down and sort of helps people sort of see like, oh, that's the direction of that slope. Let's say there was a zone of greener grass down in the bottom of the valley. I could put that in. And then I am going to Draw in my dirt. I don't know what any of the sort of geologic layers are doing down there, so I just kind of have it be um, kind of ambiguous. But if you want to, what I sometimes do is I will. Um, you know, I've, I, I know that in um, some of my lab, little landscape block diagrams, I'll, you know, draw buried treasure down there or um, whatever kind of bones I want to, 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 to throw in. Um, this 
makes for sort of a sculpted landscape map. And then you can further populate this. I forgot to color my pines. You can further populate this with 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 other features. Um, you know, if I want, uh, you can here's the you can put the the, the red tailed hawk circling above uh, here. Um, you could say that this is where the coyote den is. Um, if you, if you found, you know, lots of wood rat nests over here, you read lots of wood rat nests. And then you might want to be more specific. You found Twelve of them. So this is a um, a, a, a strategy for getting lots of spatial information. Lots of you can get the topographical information. You can get you start mapping, and it essentially forces you to start to think like um, an ecologist, because there is um, you have to deal with elevation, the distributions of things, what's where, and I find them to be a lot of fun. And it does help to sort of stand in the middle of a landscape like this when you do them. This one I made with a double valley. They are easier to do if you just do one with a single valley. Um, but um, this would be an approach that you can, you can play with in your journal. Then you can populate this with as many biological finds as you can. You know, you can say, you know, where you're finding what plants blooming. Um, you can put all those little elements in and sort of pepper them all over your map. And I, they're, 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 they're fun to play with. If you get wrapped around the axle about how to, you know, getting this contour exactly right and like, well, should this come down here yet? Um, it gets easy to be sort of confused and, and, and overwhelmed by it. Um, but if you kind of roughly can get something that feels like the landscape that you're in, uh, these sorts of diagrams are going to work well for you. I'm just going to very quickly do a real simple one here. All right, let's say there is a, um, a valley that comes down
So this river is going to come up the valley. It forks, one fork comes up here. The other fork is gonna come here. This slope that is going down here, you think, so think like if you're a water drop along this edge, which way would you travel? You would travel, I would go this way, right? You're gonna go down to the creek. If I'm a water drop on this surface over here, I'm gonna come down to the creek here. I'm gonna come down to the creek here. So I am going to be doing that. If I'm a water drop on the hill here, I'm gonna be coming down to there. If I'm a water drop here, I'm coming like that. And you see how the, these lines are fanning out around that creek? So the lines are coming down to that creek. So those lines Just imagine the water flowing down to that, that creek. And then we, can we fan around the, the top edge of that? Here you're on a flat platform and you come down. It's gonna be more green around the bases of that. Trim. Trim. still rather wet to draw in. Again, my creek is coming here. And then you get to plant, you know, whatever trees or bugs or critters or other sorts of things you want on that. And it will, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's fun because it combines both the cross section view with the elements of the map. If that again feels like a lot to take on, um, we have these diagrams of, wow, this, this is looking very fuzzy to me today. For some reason my camera is refusing to focus. Um, let me 
escape here for just a moment. And yeah, I'm not sure why that is, is, is appearing so fuzzy today. But um, the, this is a very, very accessible way to go. You add in just a bit of topography and there's a ton of information that's collected here. If you then choose to, you can mess with block diagrams and then you have the advantage of being able to map and have cross sections. But that's not required. The final thing I want to explore is just getting more of this stuff on the page. So let's say this was a, um, a, 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 a study site that you had and you're gonna have, there are some trees that are down in here. This is where the cottonwoods were. Right. Um, and then up in the draw, up in here is a zone of sort of scrubby brush. I'm going to make a key over here. There's my cottonwood. Here's my let's see, cottonwood. brush up here. Um, there's cottonwoods. Here's the place that you're exploring. Um, what you might want to do is to go around and to kind of <clears throat> head up on the hill. Oh, and there's, I'm going to just put in one more thing. There's a little group of oaks. And I'm going to use. I've got this as my kind of initial framework. So now I hike up here and I look out this way. What I'm going to do is sitting here looking out this way, I'm going to draw a little landscapeito of the view that I see. And I'm going to take it and tuck that landscapeito behind the corner of that, of, of, of this thing. If a number of my my elements here start overlapping on my page, you, are, you, you get a kind of a really fun, fun effect. So here is a hillside coming down and there is, there's a clump of oak trees. So I'm going to draw, here is a, little
once you combine a number of these elements together, they really start, it starts to, to be sort of, sort of playful relationships between things. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk over here and take a look at this scrub brush area. And so in this part here, um, I am going to draw um, a diagram of kind of what this type of scrub brush of the there's let's say I find there's sort of three principal species that are 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 in here. I would take some time and draw. Here is number one, and it has these clumps of flowering. Heads. And there's another one, uh, another plant has maybe more of broader leaves and they're bright green. With a little bit of berryness going on. And then you say to yourself, I don't really like that drawing. Um, one of the strategies, anytime you, if you, if you kind of are doing something and you don't like the way you drew it, rather than trying to get in there with white out or erase it, the best kind of first aid for any drawing you don't like is written notes. Uh, if I start, you know, writing here, thick, leathery, leaves, um, hard berries. And strong smell, tiny flowers, and soft leaves. Once I start adding written notes in there, and the drawing doesn't have to do it, all, all the heavy lifting itself, uh, you're going to find it is so much, so much easier to give yourself the kind of the, the room and, the, and permission to, to kind of put marks down on paper. I'm going to draw a little frame around these things. And notice I kind of, my frames often don't go exactly over the thing, but they kind of encompass it. Um, so this, I like to have things that break the frame. I'm going to draw a little kind of voice box that's saying that this is the stuff that is happening up here in this part of the, of the valley. So I'm getting a relationship between details that I've drawn and the big picture that I've put in. Then, uh, while you're up there, um, a little bird pops out and, or a little a beetle walks across your page. I would often draw that in kind of 
spatially related with those things. So let's say, let's say it's a little lizard. Um, and so I'm going to draw my little lizard friend. And its tail is going to come down here. That's going to have a long tail. Maybe it's like one of those whip tails. Yeah, that sounds like fun. All right, so I'm going to have the tail come like that. And I'm going to have it overlap <laughs> part of this box so that I don't have to draw the whole lizard. I draw this one little foot that kind of comes out here. Because I overlap the lizard with that box, it's now sort of visually associated with kind of being up here in this region too. This lizard is fast. So it's fun to sort of just get parts of your, 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 your work here, overlapping each other, playing with each other. Could have had this, uh, maybe it would have been good to have that, this block blocking part of that tail, but, but I didn't. Um, another thing that you can do uh, to kind of connect pieces of things um, is to, to use a little bit of just uh, color wash. Um, and I'll just demonstrate uh, how to do that here. So let's say this was, um, this is in uh, Big Oak Canyon. I'm going to give myself so let's see, B, I, G, O, A, K, kind of room for canyon. So then canyon is going to go this way. Um, so I'm going to write in a little title here.
Uh, let's see, am I, I don't know how long I was, I was looking down on my piece of paper, right? Um, you can use color um, also just to sort of unify elements in, in your, your, your page. So very often at the end of a sketchbook page, I'll just take some color here. Very often, maybe it's a color that I'm seeing in the landscape. And I will put that behind parts of these here. And it makes those elements connect together visually in a nice way. Makes it feel like you planned it all along. The metadata, or the data behind the data, um, where you are, when it is, is really, really important. Um, so let's say this was uh, June 3rd. Um, 20, so I'm going to go into the future. I'm going to put in a little icon for the weather. This day was a real sunny one. No wind. And um, there we go. And it was hot. So there's kind of just a little clump of of, of relevant what the, uh, the again the metadata the data behind the data This approach kind of gets you out more into an investigation of a place than a uh, than a portrait of a critter. Visually um, on a page, I will often sort of think of kind of blocks and kind of connecting things. I want some things to be small. I want some things to be larger. Um, you also want to visually just leave a bit of blank space on your page. Um, in this zone down here, you might just sort of visualize a block here. Use that just to, to, to write in some observations about the place or thoughts or feelings that I have, perhaps write a poem. Um, you know, if you write um, and you kind of end your words sort of in this zone and start them in this zone and you write fairly close together, this will also kind of visually feel like a block. So I'll often, you know, you can add in blocks of text. If you have some large kind of anchor drawings around a page, um, you can uh, you can you can add in some of uh, those. You can also think of this as this this block as a it could be a combination. Uh, maybe there's another landscape pico in this part here, and then this part is all writing about it.
and then you're kind of out of the habit of um, looking at just sort of, you know, here's the focal, like I, I saw this bunny, here's my drawing of the bunny. You've got a bunch of different things going on that tell more of the story of the place. And that is a, a really kind of fun way to approach this more as an ecologist. 